posting a bit earlier this week because I'm going to be away this weekend at Anime North and Doll North. If you see me, come say hi! This week's video is going to be dealing with um, one of the more attractive elements of the BJD hobby, which is customization. A lot of people find it really appealing that they can buy a doll and customize them to look however they want. Whether it's just an aesthetic preference or to suit a particular character that is either theirs or from like their favorite anime or something. All my dolls are based around original characters, although it's pretty tempting to make uh, dolls based on favorite characters. Changing something as simple as hair or makeup can completely change the way a person looks, and it's the same for dolls. When first looking at how to customize a BJD, it can be kind of intimidating. There's a lot of elements that you can change, and knowing where to start can be pretty intimidating to someone that's just starting out. Let's start with something simple, eyes. Most blank dolls that you buy from a company are going to come with eyes, and full set dolls that you buy from a company are definitely going to come with eyes. That being said, the eyes that you get from companies are often random and not necessarily what you want for that doll or that character. So where can you buy eyes that actually fit what you have in mind? There's a variety of places. Most doll companies have a section for doll accessories and stuff to customize them with. In these sections, you can usually find eyes sold directly from the company. As far as companies go, I think Soul Doll has a really gorgeous variety of eyes available, even if they're a little bit pricier. You can also go for companies that deal exclusively with doll eyes, like Ursa Flora and Oscar Doll. Some companies also sell kits so that you can make your own eyes. This adds a whole new customization element to the hobby. When looking at eyes, it's not just color and style that you're going to want to look at, however. You're also going to want to look at different materials that eyes are made of. Acrylic eyes, urethane eyes, glass eyes, they all look different in a doll. They all catch light differently and they're going to photograph differently. It's ultimately a matter of personal preference, but look up your options before deciding. Next up, wigs. Change of wig can completely change the way a doll looks. Whether short-haired, long-haired, ponytail, pigtails, some wig styles are harder to find than others, and some colors as well. A lot of colors and styles are limited edition, or seasonal depending on the company. As with eyes, however, most doll companies do offer a variety of wigs on the site. If none of the company's often limited selection of wigs appeals to you, however, you have a ton of options for finding doll wigs. You can get them from eBay, from Etsy, from Taobao, or even look up tutorials so that you can make wigs yourself, which a lot of people are doing nowadays. There's a variety of types of wigs as well, as with eyes. There's wild wigs made out of mohair and faux fur. There's wigs made out of synthetic fiber that look more like cosplay wigs and like the wigs that people wear. It's all up to personal preference. As far as actual doll companies, I find that Leak World has a really nice selection of wigs, although the quality is sometimes hit and miss. They do offer a variety of colors and styles that you're not going to find anywhere else though. It's up to you to weigh the benefits and the risks. As with eyes, full sets always come with wigs, and oftentimes these wigs are one-offs that you're only going to be able to get with that full set which can be an appealing factor for many people. It's often said that the clothes make the man, but it's also true of dolls. An outfit can completely change the doll's character, whether you go for fantasy armor or something more casual. Of course, some elements are easier to find than others. Japanese schoolgirl outfits, pretty easy to find in the doll hobby. Meanwhile, I'm still trying to find a jean jacket for my mini fang. As I've said a few times, many companies offer full sets. Full sets are an opportunity for you to buy an outfit that's limited edition and that won't be available elsewhere or any other time. It's also a really easy way to get a fully put together doll, which is perfect for someone who doesn't want all the fuss and muss of putting together a doll because they're maybe just starting out or they don't mind putting out a bit of extra money. If you want to dress your doll yourself, however, it's really easy to find people that make doll clothes. You can go on Etsy or any of the various doll forums to find people that make various kinds of clothing. Or you can even custom order for a bit of a higher price. One place that I really like to order my doll clothes from, however, is Taobao. Now, Taobao can be a bit expensive with shipping and you have to go through an agent to buy. But ultimately, you can get a lot of stuff at a very inexpensive price. And the quality is usually pretty good. Ultimately, putting together a closet for your BJD, though, is just a matter of patience and scouring the web for anything 
that fits their character or aesthetic. Now, one of the most daunting parts about customizing a doll can be face-ups. I talked a bit about face-ups in my last video, but I'm gonna go into a bit more detail here. If you're just starting out, you might wanna get the default face-up that a doll comes with directly from the company. It costs a bit more, but the doll arrives to you with a face and you don't really have to worry about it until that face-up fades or chips. Alternately, if the company face-up is an aesthetic that you like, you can send it off to any of the myriad of face-up artists that are available. It's actually a pretty good time to be in the hobby. There's tons of people opening up face-up shops for any price range and any style. Personally, I do my own face-ups. They're not very good, but hey, it's a learning process. A few things you're gonna need if you wanna do your own face-ups are, well, sealant to start with, because you don't want face-ups to stain your doll. As I said in my last video, you're also gonna wanna avoid any oil-based products. So you're gonna wanna use watered down acrylic paint for any of your lines and non-oil based pastels like soft and chalk pastels for any of your blushing and colors. Alternately for lines, you can also use watercolor pencils which can be a bit easier to maneuver if you're new to the whole thing. If you're a little more advanced, instead of chalk and soft pastels, you can get an airbrush and use acrylic paint for all your blushing and colors all over the face. Always remember to seal between layers and try not to do face-ups on humid or overly cold or hot days. Eventually, you're also going to have to redo face-ups or send them off to be redone. If you're redoing it yourself, you're going to need to wipe the other face-up. You're going to want to look up whatever material is safest to use on your doll to remove the old face-up before doing a new one. What works for resin is not going to work for ABS plastic or vinyl or porcelain. So if you don't know what to use, ask someone in the hobby. The same principles apply to body blushing. A lot of people are content to just do face-ups, but a lot of people also want more realistic coloring on the body of their dolls, in intimate areas or on hands or the whole body altogether. Some people also like to do tattoos. The same principles apply for body blushing and tattoos as they do for face-ups. You're going to want to use the same tools and the same sealant as you did for face-ups. The one thing is that because there are joints that are often moving on dolls, you might have to take special consideration. Don't blush too close to joints or else you'll get chipping. And also you might have to unstring the doll and then restring them after the body blushing process. If you're feeling really adventurous, you could attempt uh, additive or subtractive mods. As the name suggests, with an additive mod, you're adding things, often made of epoxy, to your existing doll structure, whether they're horns or completely changing the facial structure. It's up to you, but it's usually left to more experienced customizers in the hobby. Subtractive mods are where you're carving or sanding away at the sculpt to give a different look or a, a certain design in the resin. Whenever you do any sort of modding, you're going to want to wear a mask for your own safety and health. This is also true of when you're doing body blushing and uh, face-ups because sealant and airborne acrylic paint is not something you want to be breathing in. Always wear a mask and customize safely. I guess what it comes down to for all of these elements of customization is that you have a number of options. You can have it done by someone else, ordering commissions of various eyes, getting face-ups done, ordering wigs, ordering clothing from people's Etsy shops. You can do it yourself uh, making your own eyes, doing your own wigs, making your own clothes, which I've been trying to do, and doing your own face-ups and body blushing. Or you can trust the companies, buying directly from the doll companies, or ordering full sets, or dolls with the default face-up. Basically, customization is open to a variety of skill sets and budgets, and can be a really fun part of the hobby. If you don't want to do the work yourself, oftentimes it means that you have to put in a little more money or patience. Likewise, if you don't want to put in a lot of money, it might mean learning to do stuff yourself and putting in the effort to gain those skills. I'll be back next week with a video on the subject of BJDs at cons, and I'll be sharing some of my experiences from this upcoming convention this weekend. I hope you'll stick around to watch. Thanks again for continuing to watch my videos, and if you enjoyed them, remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you again next week. Bye!